All right, we're recording. Welcome to our late November meeting of the UI interest group. Thank you everyone for coming. Um, we have, uh, in the absence of recording, rolled through a couple of initial things on the agenda about rescheduling or canceling our December meeting and coming back in January, having accomplished some things by email, hopefully. Um, and we are looking at our agenda, which has a zillion UI related fixes in 312 that are going to need reviewing as we go from beta into release candidate, which is a little bit delayed. Um, Jane has been ill and hasn't been around to build the release candidate for us. And so the release team was like, oh, we'll just wait till Jane gets back. Uh, so that's going to be out in a couple of days. Um, was there anything on this list that you all wanted to talk about before I start yelling about everything? Well, I want to know more about the uh, auto suggest the 10 years in the waiting. Um, no, right? <laughs> yeah, I, I, and I just read through the whole long, sad story, people who have come and gone and, you know, and all of that. So is that true and does it really, really work? Is it... it really, really works. Yeah. Wow. Um, so it had been partially fixed years ago. The, um, the auto suggest feature that was built into Bootstrap 3 was notoriously inaccessible. Um, and that was because it messed up the ARIA labeling and everything so that the screen reader couldn't even access the field, much less get to the auto search suggestions. I mean, it, they could not use the search. And so that had been fixed um, in a bootstrap upgrade years ago. So that's why that bug is so old. Um, because the original problem was that people could not search using a screen reader at all. Um, and that had been fixed. So it wasn't quite as dire as it looked. Um, but the auto suggest part was still not great in screen readers until Jane came along and rewrote it for us um, a couple months ago. And so that is finally in um, and we can close our oldest outstanding accessibility bug in Launchpad, <laughs> which is very exciting. I know, I'm so excited that Jane did that. Hey, Taryn. Is, um, is that part of did you mean or is that separate? Nope, it's separate. And the auto suggest feature itself has not changed really at all. It may look slightly different. I think Jane updated the styles a little bit uh, for, for as she went through this, but really it's a screen reader oh. update. It just sounds totally different um, when you're using it in like JAWS or NVDA or something. Um, yeah, so I'm very excited about that one. Probably like very few people in the world will be excited about it, but I am. <laughs> what else jumped it out jumped out at y'all on, on this list? I know it's super long, it's like three pages. Four. I don't know. Yeah, no one's complaining about having a long list of things that are working fixed, you know. <laughs> Oh, you'll have it up. Uh, I don't think I have it up on my dev box at the moment, or I would show it off to you. Um, you know what? Let me let me see if it's up real quick. Um, boop, 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 boop. Oh. Yes, it is. Okay. Um, let me share my screen real quick. There we go. Okay. So this is, yeah, the styling did change quite a bit. Um, so this is the old auto suggest, I believe. Uh, and you can see it's popping up some suggestions here, but it it doesn't, 
like the styles don't change when you hover and you can't really they do when you use the keyboard so i'm going up and down with my arrows now um, but this was like really really difficult to use in in audio um, until jane fixed it so that's that's what we're talking about here and i think i have not the branch that's active here i haven't t kept up to date with main so this is not the new one but it looks a little bit better now does Jane's fixes touch any of the like back end how it works? Because my at this point very vague recollection because I think I'm like going back possibly ten years to when we turned it off was that we turned it off because it slowed everything down across our entire consortium. I think that's why we've left it off. Yeah, I would give it a try um, in the new version. Uh, I don't think. Jane's fix did anything in particular with the back end, but the back end has evolved since the last time you tried it, for sure. Um, I think there was another bug related to slowdowns um, <coughs> with auto suggest. Yeah, if you haven't used it in 10 years, I would definitely give it a try with this new version. And I will have to make sure that we call that out in the release notes. Um, I, I think what's in our agenda today um, in the accessibility section is pretty much what I pasted to Andrea for uh, release notes here. But that one, I want to make sure um, that we put in the OPAC section of the notes and that we call out what a big revision that is. That's really awesome. Um, and the other thing I'm excited about here is that the new custom OU trees interface includes my new button styles that I want to use to replace all the yellow ones. So we kind of snuck that in there. Um, and now that it's in, uh, what I, I have a space down there in the document. If you, if you come across a screen that is just like full of yellow buttons and you want to bring that to my attention, please do. I would be delighted to replace them. I know about cereals. That's the one that's like in the back of my mind going, fix me, fix me. Um, but anywhere else that you see lots of yellow, please drop me a note or drop it in this file and I will come back later this month and attack those. Uh, anything too where there's like a row of things and there's a bright red delete button, if it feels like it's in your face and you want something more subtle, Call that out too, because we have a, a more subtle um, style for that now. Um, so it doesn't have to be like red, 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 red. I'd like to say I'm super excited about the fixed fields fix. <laughs> because Same. that one was a big head scratcher to figure out what on earth was happening to start with and yes you will laugh at how simple it was to fix so we ran into this during testing for the new mark editor and it wasn't even covered by the stuff that we were doing in the mark editor. it was totally separate very old bug but it like it tripped up the testers and so when we went to hack away i like took my laptop over to bill and i said bill <laughs> what is up with this because <laughs> we tracked it down and what was happening is there was a, a like a a check in the code so that as you flipped through, you know, search results and looked at the, the mark files, it, what it was trying to do was save you time and not reload the entire tag table. If like, if it was the same record type, but it didn't work so that if you did get different record types, the fixed fields would just not update themselves. We commented out two lines of code. Done. <laughs> that was it. Uh, so what you're like, saying is it's a small enough fix that I might be able to convince it to be back yes. for, for we next. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes, because it's so tiny. And in fact, I think the actual patch that I put in just deletes like four lines, but it's itty bitty. 
and it should backport a good long ways because that bug has been in there for a while. Um, and uh, like, I never would have found that without Bill because it was like not where I expected it to be. It was way off in a different file, but he found it in like 10 minutes and just fixed it. Boom. I love Hackaway. <laughs> it's so great for that. The bug number on that, I can find it for you real quick. Uh, fixed. Oh, it's in. I it's linked in the. Oh, good. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, twenty fifteen one sixty three. I think that's a different bug. Is that a different one? I've got two oh one five one six three, from April. Yeah, that. Uh, is that did I say that was a different one? That's the one you have linked in your list. Crap. Is that not the right one? No, it that's is. the right one. That yeah. Is, yeah, that's it. That's it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's the one I said. Okay. Yeah, that's very exciting. And same with the um, the record source drop down. That one was also not covered in our mark project but the testers tripped on it and so we fixed it um yeah well it's handy all the things that surface when you're testing something else totally and whether it's you know things that need to be reported because nobody's caught them before or things that just need to be confirmed that it's like oh you know 10 versions later this is still a problem exactly Yep. Um, let's see what else. Do, 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 do. Um, I am super excited that the pull list filtering got in there because the UI group mm. worked on that for like two or three months. It was great to see that go in. Uh, I think there will be folks at every library that uses Evergreen that will be very <laughs> pleased when they see that roll out. Everybody owes Jessica Wolford a drink when she can drink again. Um, yeah. Uh, let's see. What else? What else? What else? I lost my window. There we go. Um, so the things that I wanted to mention down here in the accessibility section, um, the, the ones in bold are the ones where we did like just huge sweeps of, of lots of file changes to just kind of correct a, you know, a, a persistent problem in lots of interfaces. The org selectors, I redid twice um, because the first approach that I took ended, it, it gave us lots of like extra labels floating around in places we didn't want them and alignment problems and things like that. So I came in early one morning and I just redid all of it. Um, and so the re, re, redone version is what's in there. Um, and keep an eye out if you're looking at the release candidate and the beta, um, as, you, as you go through screens, Keep an eye on the org selectors and see if you see any labels that are out of place or anything that just doesn't look aligned right, because those are in nearly every screen. Um, and it's a it's an accessibility fix. They weren't labeled. Um, and I I do want to come back to this at some point. And. If we have to rearrange layouts, we have to rearrange layouts, but I want all of these to have a visible label that tells you what is the context for this org selector on this screen. Is it being used as a scope filter? Is it somebody's home library? We use it for a lot of different things and it doesn't always say what it's being used for. You just have to know. Um, and so I want to make sure that we label those so that people know what this component is doing on this particular screen, since it serves 12 different purposes. 
But right now, in some places, we just don't have room for it in the current layout. And then fixing, like, like redoing tons of layouts is not something I had time to do. So I was like, all right, I'm going to get us halfway there and fix it for screen readers. And we'll come back and rearrange layouts later. I think the history behind a lot of our less than transparent interfaces has been concerns about how to fit everything on the screen. But For I, sure. I very much applaud all efforts to make them more transparent. Well, the next one that I'm working on right now is the patron search form um, mm. and getting those labels out of the placeholders. Mm -hmm. So it's going to end up longer. gonna end up longer sometimes, <laughs> sometimes that's the cost well and i think everybody has like larger screens than they did 10 years ago you know um so maybe this is not as much of a space issue as it used to be but uh scott i will beat you with a newspaper <laughs> no <laughs> <laughs> more modals no 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 oh no with, with patron search though are we still expecting it to have the shrink and expand I'm thinking of um, grouping them a little bit better so that, and then putting like a row of checkboxes across the top to show like the name fields, the, um, what have I got in my, at my, my chicken scratch notes are right here. Uh, like the phone and address fields as a group. And then the like username, database ID, identification numbers, date of birth, like those ID things will be in a group. Because um, my guess, not being a frontline working with patrons, is that the majority of the time libraries are just doing a name search. And it's when something yeah. more comes up that they're using any of those other fields. So I wouldn't think having more on the screen would be an issue if it's something that they use periodically as opposed to the section of it that they use on a regular basis. Yeah, and I I'm definitely not having worked with patrons in a while. <laughs> I'm definitely planning on keeping it to where the short version is is the one that's up, but then having a persistent, you know, if you want all of the fields, you can leave it that way and it'll just, it'll have all the fields. And I want to run that by our circulation people. Um, and I wish Diane were here because she's great for that, but. Uh, I will say I on. use that screen frequently and the grouping sounds great. Okay. Having the persistent toggle, which I think is how it works now as yeah. well, is something I like. Um, and on this topic, generally, we do have a lot of small screens still. There are people who oh, okay. are on laptops, some of them quite small laptops. Yep. But I think the fact that on a screen that has a lot going on, you might have to scroll is OK. It's fine. Um, I agree. <laughs> there is some attention to be spent to what's above the fold in those cases versus what's below the fold. Um, and I am very aware as someone who sometimes ends up on um, screens where the content wraps into different amounts of columns, how disorienting it can be yeah. to be looking at a screen on a different size and suddenly have, oh, this is in the third column. Oh, it's not on this computer. Um, so sometimes the tricks we do to make things fit nicely can have some cost to people who move from one machine to another. For sure. Yep. Uh, and I will, yeah, I'm I'm like very much in the midst of that right now and I will email the list when I have something to look at. Um uh, one thing that I don't know if it's come up with that yet that I would love to see and I would be interested to see what other think others think um is pulling the live or the like the scope or the org unit one yes. name Out. so that's part of the persistent because the number of times we've had people who run into problems and then we discover that they've been searching the entire consortium, which is why their opted in patron isn't showing up because they don't see it unless they expand. 
That feel was in such a weird spot. Yeah, my my thought was to pull out the profile group and the org unit selector and put those in their own persistent, always visible spot. Yeah, yeah, cool. All right. Um, going back to our three twelve list. Actually. Oh yeah. On okay. that topic, because mm -hmm. we have had a lot of confusion about persistent filters mm -hmm. before, it occurs to me that it can be very nice if the choice to have a filter be persistent is something you opt into, if you can like pin a filter. Um, mm -hmm. And where I think of where I encountered this most recently is um, Libby started doing this. And it took, there was a little learning curve but I think it's been really good for folks that if you want it to always show audiobooks, you can make it so it only shows audiobooks and you don't have to dive into settings. You just apply the filter and pin it. Um, mm -hmm. And I wonder if some of the areas where we have had something never be persistent before, or if we've had something always be persistent before, we might be able to do something similar where it becomes something that the user can choose. Yes. Um, I think that would be awesome. We I, I also know the implementation is not necessarily <laughs> simple, either technically or I think the harder part is the user interface. Like, how do you make it clear how this works to folks? But yeah, but we can look for examples on how other people do that, and we can steal from the best and uh, mm -hmm. make it work. Right now, we don't have a great well. We don't really have any interface for managing user specific preferences. Mm -hmm. We have the workstation settings, which I hate. Um, and um, so creating user preferences that follow you from workstation to workstation is on my list of things that we need for accessibility purposes, but that will be very beneficial in other areas. So I'm, I'm, I'm poking the other developers on that and trying to get somebody to fund a project. So if anybody wants to fling money at us for that, that'd be awesome. It sounds um, like that's the kind of thing where we'd then be able to actually go and figure out what things are user settings versus mm -hmm. others. Because that's one of my problems often is I'm like, is yep. this a user setting? Is this a workstation setting? Yes. And it's muddied right now. So we have to go kind of go through all of the, the existing ones and, and pull those out. And we do have a document for that started uh, in our last meeting, if you want to go into the October notes and, and find that document, we do have a file where we're kind of starting to, you know, poke at that problem and, and think about what needs to be a user setting and what can stay a workstation. You all feel about the sound effects. I, want I to think agree. even though people can redefine them, we should redefine the defaults to something that is actually listenable. Thank you. Yeah. I hate them, except for when I'm training, um, because then I know when people do something wrong. That's the only time I want them on. <laughs> years and years ago, one of our libraries emailed us and was like, I keep having the like the diving slash red alert sound go off. And it was a very accurate description of that noise. Mm -hmm. I would really love to take the time to like investigate sensory friendly sound effects and come up with some better ones. But until then, I kind of just want to make them off by default. Um, I also have to say like, any argument that says that they are necessary indicates a problem. Just like we don't rely on color, there should never be yeah. a time you need to have the sound turned on. Yep. That is a good point. All right. Um, I don't think that we have a launch pad bug specifically about those, but they bother me. <laughs> so I want to make the the default for new installations to not have that on uh, personally. All right. Uh, that was, that's the one thing that always pops into my head when I'm thinking about workstation versus user settings. I'm like, oh God, the sound effects. <laughs> uh, 
Um, okay. I have a little list down there of things that are going to need some feedback. Um, and the, the one that is going to be hard to review, honestly, is the new one on progress bar labeling. <laughs> because they're so brief um, that it's hard to to hit them with the inspector. And so you just kind of have to look at the code to see what I did here with these labels. But I wanted to bring it up because a lot of our progress bars are tied to loading grids and they're gonna get their labels from whatever the grid has. And a lot of our grids don't have labels. So that's gonna get, ah, good point, Scott. Um, one thing, so we, we've got grid stuff coming up and I keep saying this, but genuinely like we're making progress on it and it's close. Um, I think long-term I want to get us to the point where every grid has a visible heading that says, this is what the grid is, here's how many results there are, or this is an infinite log and we're showing you the first 20 lines. There may be millions, we don't know. Um, ah, thank you, Jennifer. Um, but right now, a lot of our grids don't have that kind of title uh, and they're, they don't even have anything in the code that, um, like there, there is a field for like a, a visible label, but as part of the, this is where like, it, it, I get turned around in circles working on accessibility because everything is tied together. Yes. We're gonna have to add labels to the grids so that we can use them in the progress bars. And going through all of the grids is going to be a project to figure out what that label should be. Um, I, I mentioned that on the progress bar bug, but I haven't opened a separate ticket for it yet. Um, if anybody is in a position to go through lots of grids, and write labels, let me know. I'd be delighted to help out and, and collaborate with someone on that. But if not, um, it'll get uh, added to my list of grid projects for next year. Um, Yeah, I'm working with Mike to wrap that up and hopefully we'll have grids out for everyone to look at early in January. Crossing fingers. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Um, and then this bug on the mismatch between the menu name and the interface name, Jennifer did an amazing job of going through all of the menus, <laughs> pointing out where it's different in the menu versus what it says when you get to the page. Um, but she mentioned in the, the comments there that um, ACK had recently changed at the time that she was doing all this and it has changed more since then. Um, so uh, this is coming up imminently on my to-do list um, and I will be tackling it probably early next week. Uh, so if anyone has time to go fill in the rest of them for ACK, I would super, super appreciate it. If not, I'll get to it. And, and I'll do them as part of that project on Monday. I'm not uh, sure if I'll have time, but I might because we are doing some ACK testing right now. So as part of that, um, yeah. You, That'd be you amazing. You probably tell that I was <laughs> irritated with the mismatches one day. And I appreciate that because it makes it so much easier for me to go through and fix it. Um, but yeah, so that's, uh, I will have a patch for that out very soon. And then um, if there's anything else in the menus that you don't see listed in those comments, maybe just call it out and say, you don't even have to fix it, just say this one's wrong. <laughs> so I make sure that I get them all. I'm not sure if it's been reported as a bug, but we ran into some problems when we renamed the uh, statistical categories because um, mm. one of our techs did the renaming for that um, to, so it would still be alphabetical. Mm -hmm. um, and 
we then wanted to change some of the button names, mm. but the button names were tied to the header. So we couldn't actually change the new button names without the heading change, like the page name changing again. Right. Um, so okay. we were going to put in a bug. I just don't know if we've had a chance yet, but I don't know if that's yeah. the case with other Angular interfaces because I, oh, I mean, the button works, but on the documentation front, it's a bit of a unwieldy name for the button. Cause I think, let me just pull it up. Uh, Cause the, oh no, that's a test server. Where's our real one? <laughs> um, Cause the interface is now called statistical categories, item editor. And the button is called new statistical category item and I think we couldn't just change it to like new statistical category or something okay uh, which gets more interesting when you go to the entries and you've got a button called new statistical category entry item like the names just get longer and longer yep okay I will see if there is an existing bug, but it feels like that's kind of related to the headings since it the is, headings prevent yeah. the buttons. Yeah. Kind of hate the fact that we have the buttons completely separate from the page titles. And so we have to change it in both places. Um, The newer versions of Angular have a totally different way of handling page titles. Well, because this is a brand new interface. Right. Um, and what our tech noted is that the new label or label editor gets, or the, the label gets used in both the header text and the button text. And you can't split it. Okay. Um, and we have not submitted that as a bug, but I will poke the necessary. Okay. Thank you. That may be tricky to fix. Yeah. Um, I'll just drop this into the chat for any developers who want to look at this. We skipped Angular 14. We went straight from, I think, 12 to 15, which was a big jump. Um, but as of 14, which means we can do this, um, if we want to, there's a whole new way of handling titles in Angular and it's tied to the URL rather than specified in the HTML. Um, this would be a fairly large project to go through and, and redo the way we title pages. Uh, but I just ran into it. I was looking at the one uh, on um, the circulation interface uh, where when you get down to the stuff that's in the other tab, the, the page titles all say other in, in all caps and it's terrible. Um, and I genuinely don't know how to fix that on the Angular JS side, but I fixed it in the new Angular um, interface. Uh, I haven't put that branch up yet. It's part of a huge review that I'm doing of circulation. But the way that we handle that is just not elegant at all. And it made me really long for this new title thing that the uh, new, I say it's like four versions old now in Angular, but um, it's new to us because we, we just got 15 fairly recently. So yeah, I haven't dug too deeply into this yet, but I would really like to think more about proposing that we do something with that. But that doesn't... Like, I don't know if this would help us build a more dynamic navigation menu. And buttons are a whole diff a whole other question. Like, buttons are just hard. So um, yeah, Taryn, I think that it just ends up going through the 
um, the regular I-18N. Um, process and then it'll I think this is a very simplified example uh, if I remember correctly at the point where you get this dot title dot set title I think that that gets translated um, and that's like the last step in the in the chain yeah, exactly. So it doesn't change the URL. Uh, it doesn't localize that at all, but it changes the title that displays based on that URL. And our localization infrastructure is also a little bit old and creaky. Um, so that's all a big can of worms. Um, okay. Titles are a rabbit hole. Buttons are a whole different rabbit hole. And they are interconnected. Uh, and we could chase down that for a very long time, but did anybody have anything else that they wanted to bring up uh, in 312 or things that um, are pressing but did not get handled in 312 or other general things that haven't been filed yet and you're sort of dancing around how to do it or anything like that? I was just looking at the next one on the list there under the headings, the name label and the create PO form. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and I've lost my server again. Because uh, is that a visible label we're looking for or a screen reader? It is a visible label. When you create a new PO, you get a little modal. Um, and it has a field that just says name. Mm -hmm. uh, and it ends up being the name of the PO. Yeah. Um, and I'm trying to figure out, like, what is the best way to phrase this label that's going to end up being the title of a purchase order, but if you don't enter one, it just gets a number. Sometimes I think the solution is not to think of a better name, <laughs> but... Or, or title, the, you know, the text of the label might be fine, but then you might need explanation. Right. There might be no concise short thing that does it, but then if you have an explanation that is either visible from the start or easy to show in a standard way that explains, this is why you might choose to provide a name and this is what happens if you don't. Mm -hmm. And it's fine mm -hmm. if name wasn't that super easy to understand because in the future you see name and you remember hopefully and if and if you did forget you read the little explanation again that's kind it, of what i was leaning towards is putting an explanation there the the tool tips like we have in the spine label um template thing um mm -hmm. are those something that works with screen readers or because they're the ones with the little question mark and then you hover over it and it gives the text. Like, I, I just don't know, like, <laughs> tool tips work with screen readers. Stephanie's well. face has so much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I can't play poker, y'all. I have no poker face at all. And you can tell everything I am thinking based on how my face is contorting at any given time. Uh, we do have a list of resources on... Um, because I, I really like the idea of go? having explanation there. Um, mm -hmm. and I think we would want to do like, if we were to do that, we wouldn't want to do it just for the name one. Um, it would be handy to do it for the prepayment required as well, because we get a lot of questions about that one and what checking that box 
does. And if we were putting explanation in for one field, you know, would make sense to put it in for that one too. Yeah. I, I will say to address the, um, tool tips, um, thing <laughs> explicitly, there are ways that will make it more accessible for some people, but any solution that requires your like average sighted user with a mouse to know that they're supposed to mouse over something is not a good solution, no matter how well it might work with a screen reader or something. You might make it work beautifully with a screen reader, but it's not good UI to have something interactive and not be obvious that it's interactive. Yeah, and tooltips in particular are problematic. I do have a list of, oh yeah, here we go. Um, and I was trying to find this, I don't know if I left this out of the wiki version of the accessibility guide, but let me, um, On. Guide. Uh, sorry, I'm copying a link so that I can get it to you all. Here we go. Okay, in the table of contents, um, down towards the end of the contents, there is a section that says to do more components. Um, and there is a list of tooltip um, resources right at the top of, where are we? Page 34. Um, there's like four articles there. So if you want to go read about tooltips, be my guest. In general, tooltips aren't great um, from an accessibility standpoint. And that's what the bug about the field mapper placeholders and instructions has to do with, um, is also getting some of those out of, some of those instructions out of the tooltip and into a more persistent visible state. Um, that's one of the few accessibility bugs that didn't get merged into 312. Um, so we'll try to pick that up in a point release, but uh, yeah. Um, I don't know that I've come across that specific screen that you're talking about, Jennifer, with the spine labels, but. Um, yeah, cause it has a it... whole bunch of tool tips, but you have to get to it through item status or the holdings editor, there's actually, and this is also something that I don't know if others find this irritating as well, but there's no link anywhere in any of the menus to actually get to the spine label um, thing. I mean, it makes sense because you need the items to have the spine labels, but if you want to go in and edit your templates or something, there's no way to do that without going through an item. Well, oh, and it, it, it irritates Taryn as well. <laughs> is that a screen that you can get to or is it a modal? Uh, like it's a full, its own interface. It's its own interface. It and we don't have in a... a new window, at least in the version oh, I use. Man. Yeah. So my frustration with, with the, the items editors is that we have two of them because they're modals because you have to get to one of them through angular js and one of them through angular and i'm like god this is like modals are bad um but yeah okay um if we I want, think uh, if you saved the url you could maybe get to it but i don't okay no so if we if we need a menu item for that let's let's file a bug and 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 get a menu item to it if it's a as long as it's not a modal, we can do that. Um, if it's a modal, all bets are off. How do we tell the difference? Uh, the modal will pop up. It's it's like the the hovering box with the shadow. Oh, yeah. Uh, no, it is yeah. definitely not a modal. It okay. Is, it might have got a. <laughs> yeah, if it's got a proper URL, then we can put it in the menu. 
unless it's got an item number attached in the URL, then we have to do something else. But but we can figure it out. I'm just looking to see what it looks like. Mm. Oh, okay. I see, Taryn. So maybe we need something like you can get to the screen and then you have to enter an item number if you didn't get there from an item. Would that make sense? It's I mean, very, it makes a lot of sense to want to edit your template even if you don't have an item. Right. This is the thing. You shouldn't need to specify an item to right. want to edit, edit export, or import a template. Okay. Yeah. And but I also. No way to... Go ahead. Go ahead. There's no way to get there from the administration menus. No. That stinks. We should fix that for sure. But it, like like Taryn's saying, you know, it would be useful if on that interface you could then scan in or upload a list of barcodes to have mm -hmm. the spine labels then preview. Um, it looks right. like Angular JS um, okay. interface. Okay. I mean, the fact that we have it at all now is amazing because for a very long time, spine label printing was uh, outside of evergreen thing. Oof. Yeah. Especially if you needed to do a sheet. Um, so it's, you know, yay, we have it, yeah. but it would be, th there, there are ways we could improve it. There are For a sure. lot of bugs related to it already in Launchpad and not yeah. just UI things. Like there are <laughs> feature issues as well. Right. Okay. Well, let's at least get a bug in there to get it into the menus so that we can reach that screen. Um, um, but yeah, it has, when you go through and do your settings, it has like upwards, I think of 20 tooltips because there's a tooltip for every single setting. Um, I think, hang on. I think I have a mm. screenshot. <laughs> um, I think, I think in awesome. our we might have a screenshot of it. Um, so I will show you while you're looking for that. Uh, bootstrap. I will show you what I want to move towards um, with everything that is currently uh, in tooltips. Um, do, 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 do. Here we go. Oh, I see your link. Step three. Oh, sweet baby Jesus. That's too many tooltips. And that's only the top part. There's a whole, if you scroll down, there's a whole like another 15. Oh God. Yeah, no, let's not do that. Uh, this is where I would like us to go for all of those explanation type things and it makes screens longer which people are going to be annoyed about but there's just oh, so many so things nice there. it's so nice it's so <laughs> it is so nice like it's right there you see it yeah. and you don't have to think about it and yeah. maybe it will provide some encouragement for folks to be concise in the words they pick which isn't bad Writing for interfaces is its own magical field of study. So yes, this is where I'm heading. And this is what I, I did for the field mapper, which would get it into a lot of places that ha currently have tooltips. But this is a whole new world that I have not encountered before. Thanks, Jennifer. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. That's because you can't find it if you don't know what's there. Well, true. Yeah. And because I haven't had time to sit in on any of y'all's amazing training sessions, which I've been meaning to do for a year now, um, to like poke my way through all of these interfaces that I have not encountered in my my own explorations of, of Evergreen. So, all right, well, we'll get a separate bug filed for all of those. And with we have the, just- I was just Go gonna ahead. say with the additional text in your example, like I think 
you know, if we set user expectations and like talk about the benefits, like I think we can, you know, mm -hmm. we can get people over the the screen is longer by promoting those benefits and yeah. Well, and for these screens that you don't use frequently, it's just so frustrating to have to try to remember what that thing does. And I think people will be generally happier in the long run if the explanation is there. Even if in, in a couple of particular spots, it gets a little scrolly. Uh, okay, we're coming up on 2 p.m my time which means we're about out of time here anything else people wanted to discuss before we run away stephanie are there um still since we're not doing the release candidate till next week are there still mm -hmm. some open pull requests you want me to try getting in oh gosh thank you taryn um you I can just email me if, if or i can just look at the list yeah i think I like we threw so many things in and y'all I don't know if y'all were the rest of y'all were like looking but Taryn was a whirlwind at merging all of the accessibility bugs in particular um I think if we can get that uh that lint rule stuff merged and we can save that for last because it is one of those things that just changes a million files in annoying ways for developers and it's going to break every outstanding branch that people have out there but um yeah i don't i don't know that i'm i'm confident enough to to uh do that one <laughs> i totally understand jane's batch of lint fixes is much simpler than mine because they were mostly like really basic syntax and white space changes mine is a little bit more gnarly because it gets into button syntax and there's some spots where that changed more than just like a type attribute. Um, but if we can squeak that in there, that gets us a complete sweep of keyboard compatibility for all of our buttons throughout the Angular interface, which I would be very excited about. Um, so I will throw that out to the rest of y'all if you have time to review some code. Uh, the lint rules um, which is everything it's on that bug. Um, that's the one that I think if we can squeak that into 312, that'd be amazing. The rest we can, we can save until later. I feel like. Although uh, I, I did update that workstation uh, label one that you had done a while back. Um, oh, I thought I uh, had already put that in. I guess I didn't get to that one. It uh, it needed work because I screwed up the layout, but I fixed it. Oh, too. that's right. Yeah. Yeah, I can get that one in for sure. Awesome. Thank you. Yay. That's exciting. That's uh, like the first form fields that you come to as a new Evergreen user, and they weren't screen reader friendly. So we'll fix that. All right, y'all. It is about that time. I will stop the recording. Thank you all for being here. And